Hi guys, and today I'm going to be making a ruined gatehouse to go with the ruined wall sections I made a little while ago. And to start with taking a rough oval of foam core and beveling the edges. And then using a pen to mark out a rough floor plan for where the ruins and the gatehouse will be. And making the main bulk of the gatehouse in roughly the center with a piece of wall sticking out either end so it can be put in a few different configurations with the other pieces. Then using some styrofoam cutting some small rectangles to make some large bricks for the base. And using a tin foil ball to impart some texture onto them. And then laying these out on the floor plan so you get a rough idea of how many bricks you need. And then with the larger pieces first, gluing them down onto the base. And then building up layer by layer, making sure to interlock the bricks and changing up the various size and shapes to get some more interesting stonework. And you can also use some half pieces on the edges to make a nice kind of gradient effect where the wall has crumbled and fallen down. And then using a few more pieces of foam core to bulk fill out the inside of the piece. And this will give us a surface to use later. And I wanted the top part of the build to be removable so you could place a gate or some doors inside. So using a piece of insulation of flooring board and then just gluing bricks on the edge of that so it fits flush to the surrounding stonework. And working brick by brick so any kind of changes of elevation are caught by the brickwork as well. And once the bricks are done attached to the top piece going in and placing a second layer of stonework on the front so there is something that it can fit to. And it's a close fit so it should be pretty stable later on. Next taking some more pieces of the insulation board and just putting some flagstones down on the top of the wall pieces. And then to give the same effect on the main piece of the tile going in with a sculpting tool and just pressing the flagstone texture into the base. and being careful not to go too deep and making the piece weaker. And on the side of the pieces, I glued some offcuts of styrofoam to give the impression of stonework that has been drumbled together and collapsed. Then, in the centre of the piece, I glued some more pieces of offcut styrofoam to give some rough guidelines for any doors or grids that will be placed down later. Next, it was time to mix up some sculptor mould. And making sure it's a little bit lumpy, but still workable with. And then applying that all over the base, as well as in between the gaps of some of the larger bits of stonework. and also using it on the end of the pieces to fill the gaps between the stonework. And I wanted to make a simple portcullis for the inside. Taking some thin strips of plastic art and doing a simple lattice weave, so going above and then below on alternating strips with plastic glue to seal it together. Mm -hmm. 
And for the rivets, where the pieces intersect, I had these small kind of self-adhesive beads that I got from a craft store. And just going in with a pair of tweezers and placing them over the drawings. And then, to add some wear and tear to the door, gone in with a pair of clippers and just pulled apart and snipped out a few various cuts and gouges on the piece. And I also wanted some wooden doors as well, so with some pieces of balsa wood, cutting out the rough shape and then test fitting it to make sure the size was about right. And you can see it fits nicely into those guy stones on the base. So then splitting the door into two and then into individual planks and then gluing them back together with some more pieces of balsa wood for supporting beams as well as the plastic card on the front as well. So it has wooden beams on the back and on the front it has some kind of reinforced iron bars. I also went in with a sharp knife and gouged out some beveling on the edges just to make it look a bit more like rough woodwork. And for the reinforcing beams on the front I went in and put some more riveted studs on the front of them. And I don't love the glue on these things, it's quite fiddly to use. It would probably be easier just to use super glue on them. And then just try fitting everything again, making sure it all lines up with the base stones, as well as it works with both the grid and the wooden doors. And then it was time to put some basing texture on. So I'm mixing together a few types of flock with some black gesso and some PVA. Went in and applied this all over the base, as well as using it to fill any of the larger gaps between the stonework and on the edges where the wall section had collapsed. And it's also good for hiding any of the hot glue where it has seeped out between the brickwork. And then, once that's dry, it's time to go over and give the entire piece a base coat of black gesso just to help seal it together and provide a base colour for later painting. And now for the first colour, going in with a mid-brown acrylic paint and giving it a coat all over. Then, once the brown is dry, going in and hitting just the stonework as well as any rocks on the base with a mid-grey and a very heavy dry brush. Then, using the same brown and some white paint, we're going to go in and give the entire thing a coat of tan. And this will help to tie the entire piece together and give highlights on a lot of the details. And you don't want to go too heavy on the stonework here because you do want to preserve some of the grey colour from underneath. And using a slightly watered down mix of the same colour, just going in and hitting the doors as well. Then, with an even paler tan colour, just going in and hitting a few highlights on the gatehouse. And I went a bit too heavy with the tan here, and in order to bring that back to a bit of a grey colour, just going in with a fairly thick white dry brush to pull out the details and bring a bit of the underneath colour back to the top.
then to add a bit of weathering, getting some green acrylic paint and diluting it quite heavily to make a bit of a wash and then applying that on the lower half of the model as well as anywhere patchily where it could accumulate. And also applying that on the wooden doors just to weather them down and get a bit of rot on them as well. Then giving the grate a dark base coat of metallic paint. As well as the iron strips on the wooden doors. Then with a bright orange paint, diluting it down and applying a layer over the ironwork to give the effect of rust. And doing the same process of applying patchy rust to the grid and working up to a lighter colour. So working from an orange to a yellow. Then I mixed up a foliage paste using foam, some basing flock, and some PVA. And then applying this mostly in the corners and the cracks of the build, as well as around the base to build up some low scrub. And then going in with a few basing tufts. And then using a leaf hole punch and some painted paper, just going in and creating some leaves to put over the base and on the top of the stonework. And giving each one a small crimp, just to seem a bit more natural. Then once the foliage base is dry, going in with a diluted black paint and giving each one a bit of a wash, just to blend it together into the rest of the piece. And there we have the completed piece with the removable top section so you can place the wooden doors in as well as the metal grid if you need it and those can be removed during gameplay or knocked down or whatever you want. And combining that with the previous pieces I've made you can create quite a few different setups and it fits in a lot of different genres and settings as well. But thanks so much for watching guys, really hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you next time.